Hey guys, welcome back to episode 72. Today we are talking about one of the most important things to do in labor. We're talking about moving it and grooving it. Let's untangle it. Welcome to the Pulling Curls Podcast. I'm Hillary, your curly-headed host on the podcast where we untangle everything from pregnancy, parenting, and home routines. I want you to know that there are no right answers for every family, and I find that simplifying my priorities is almost always the answer. It's tangled, just like my hair. Okay, guys, today's guest is my good friend, Mandy. This is her third time on the Pulling Curls podcast. If you don't remember, she is the birth nurse on the interwebs. She teaches nurses and patients about how to make labor better for both of us. So I want to introduce my friend, Mandy Irby. This episode of the Pulling Curls podcast is sponsored by the online prenatal class for couples. It simplifies understanding labor so you can have a more relaxed pregnancy and birth taught by a highly experienced labor and delivery nurse and can be done wherever you are, whenever you want. No more arranging busy schedules to fit in a prenatal class. Save 15% with the coupon code UNTANGLED. You can find out more at pullingcurls.com in the menu under courses or in this episode's show notes. Hey, Mandy, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hey, Hillary, thanks for having me. You are a third timer. (gasps) <gasps> really? Three times? I'm pretty sure we've done this is our third time. We talk a lot. It's not going to be our last either. I got to say that. So, <laughs> okay. So today we're talking about movement during labor and you guys are going to think, well, of course I'm going to move. I move all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. You should. I'm a big fan of prenatal yoga. Did you do yoga when you're pregnant, Mandy? Heck yeah, I did. Yeah. Ask me how many times I've done it since. Uh, I do yoga now. Do it. Yeah. Once a week. I do not I do not like yoga. Let me just state that. It's a little too slow and deliberate for this one. Yeah. Yeah. It requires a lot of mental exercise for me. Yeah. Too much feeling talk for me. <laughs> but but yes, um, movement is super important while you're in labor. But when you're in pain, how many of us like when I had kidney stones, do you think I just wanted to run around and do some lunges? No. No. I wanted to ball up on my bed and cry and vomit. <laughs> oh, not move. Yeah. It's just not your first reflex when you're when you're in pain. It's like, let's move some more. So I think it's really important to get your partner on board with this one because um, you're going to have that first reflex to just lay around and they might have to be like, and they might have to support you because it feels good to like do the bear, you know, like you're back in junior high dance doing the bear hug dance pose, you know? So it feels good to like hold on to that partner, um, you know, during movement. What do you think, Mandy? Yes, I definitely agree. My partner would definitely be like, okay, whatever you think is right. If you don't want to (laughs) move, unless I specifically said, make me get up. (laughs) Yeah. Right. You need like a code word for like, no, for real, I'm not going to get up. But For the most part, it helps to have encouragement and it helps to have someone who can keep you doing it. Yeah. And in one of our other episodes on how to go into labor, we talked curb walking, we talked sexy hip circles. So all those are great to do in early labor. You know, even once you know you're in labor, I probably wouldn't have it in me to curb walk. That sounds really uncomfortable. But sexy hip circles on a yoga ball feels good because it also helps to stretch out those hips and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the hospital, then you've got a whole other bag of chips because the nurse has this monitor strapped to you. So Mandy, what are some ways you encourage patients to move once they're at the hospital? Oh gosh, I continue to encourage creative ways of movement. You're not going to find a lot of curbs in your labor room and it is difficult to find stairs even in a lot of places, but it usually still feels good. Better to move than to be stuck in the bed. And you don't really realize that or most of my patients don't realize that until they are stuck in the bed or feel like they're, oh, I'm stuck, I can't move, I'm hurting so much or I'm stuck, I can't move because I have lines coming off of me. So then when we can talk about, are you actually stuck? What's causing you to feel stuck? Can we adjust, like take a bunch of stuff off of you so you don't feel stuck? Intermittent monitoring, wireless monitors, lock the IV until you actually need it, take the blood pressure cuff off once it's done working. All the lines could be adjusted 
did. So then do you feel stuck because you're in pain? And I say, okay, if you hate it, this is what my mom said when I went to say I wouldn't want to eat it, eat something. Try it. If you hate it, you don't have to do it again. They're like, oh, yeah. okay, deal. And they get up and they're like, Mandy, oh my gosh, that bed sucks so badly. <laughs> <laughs> and I love, my husband says, you just like being right. I say, I will not say I told you so, but yes, that bed is very uncomfortable. <laughs> and so they get up and then they really realize, okay, it doesn't feel great. It didn't make everything just magically go away, but it feels better than the alternative of not moving. Yeah. And labor pain is a different kind of pain than stones. Stones are warning you that something's wrong and, and your body is sick and it's trying to heal and it's and it's inflamed and it's it's kind of like a warning. Labor pain is work. It's not necessarily a warning as it goes on. It's more of this is what it feels like to work really hard to accomplish something inside your uterus. So moving with it and trying to understand and try to feel, okay, well, this still feels bad, but it feels better than what I was doing. That's really great information. Maybe that's helpful in helping the baby find their way. Yeah. I will say I feel like nurses are reticent to do wireless monitors. I mean, ours weren't set up to go in our rooms. And so it did take um, a little work. And a lot of times I'd suggest it to patients, but I'd have to be like, caveat, they don't work for everybody because ours didn't. Right. Um, if you were really overweight and your thighs rubbed on your leg, a lot of times they wouldn't work because of that. And so I'd okay. say we 100% are going to try these things. Yeah. Yes. Wireless monitors are usually more work for the nurse. But what gets the nurse over the hump, and I can say this because I'm a nurse and I didn't like them, is people who say, that's what I need. I need the wireless monitor or I need to try it because this isn't working for me. And then the nurses or the nurses either forced to and be like, okay, okay, I told you about it or you know about it. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to put in the good effort. And then sometimes it works. And the nurse is like, oh my gosh, everyone's so happy when it works. This is great. And it's kind of like a um, positive reinforcement for the nurse. To yeah. Or they're forced to do it when the previous nurse did it. And that was usually me because I really, really wanted these wireless monitors to work. And I teach parents, like, ask for the wireless. Try to have more movement if you can. Try to not feel as tied down. See what options you have. And I wanted to be someone that supported that and did that in the work in the hospital. So I would put them on and just practice or see if someone wanted them. I'd offer them all the time. Nurses after me hated it. <laughs> they're like, oh, it's already on her and she loves it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that meant they had to learn how to use it. They're slowly getting better wireless monitors, but just yeah. ask your nurse. The thing is, is a lot of patients don't want to move and they don't want you to bother them and they don't want to. So you kind of get into a zone where you're like, well, she probably doesn't want to move. So if you come in and you, you want to make movement a priority, which I would suggest that you do, you are you might have to just be a little bit more vocal about it. I bet your nurse, I'm fine to try the wireless monitors, but I always like to say, it may not work. So I don't want you to get your hopes up, but I'm going to yeah. give my best effort. And that's all we can really do. Yeah. Yeah. And then every Everyone's on the same page, right? Yeah. It's not, it's just a uh, technology that hasn't come as far as we had thought by now. Yeah. Okay. So you still have to move once you get an epidural. Have you ever seen a walking epidural, Mandy? No. Have you? No, I haven't either. No. <laughs> I think it's just like the elusive unicorn of labor and delivery. I see people talking about it on TikTok and I was going to be like, if you have a walking epidural, are you still in pain and you've just wasted your money on a needle in your back? Because it I've seems heard. like if you could walk, you'll still feel everything. So that's no... That's it's not. different medication. I've heard that they exist, but I also agree it sounds like a unicorn. It's like, where does it exist? I've definitely talked to anesthesia. That's just like, nope. You know, they got the residency at like big universities that are just like, it doesn't really work. Yeah, most people, and I've talked to them too. I think they don't want me to think that they're a thing and push it. Uh, it's not like I could tell an anesthesiologist to do a walking epidural if they're not going to do one. They're not, they're, that's not what they offer. What I've heard, however, it does sound wonderful, but I think that it requires a lot of education, just like around an epidural. Everyone thinks, I want an epidural because I want to feel this certain way. When you end that sentence, and finish that sentence for yourself, everyone's going to finish it with a different answer. Or, you know, we're going to have a variety of answers. I don't want to feel anything. I don't want to feel that I have a body. I want to be able to move all the time. I still want to feel pressure. I only want to feel a little. I want to feel a lot. We all have different expectations about an epidural. So the same with a walking epidural or like a less dense epidural. Some people still get that. And they're like, no, Mandy, I can get out of bed. And I'm like, no, really, I really can't let you go. We can't test it. But they can move so well. I have been almost tricked to where I want 
wonder if they could stand. Of course, I don't. I'm like, please, no, 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 please. Worst case scenario, we so all much charting, Mandy. We, so we much break charting. So many bones. So much charting. We've never done it, but they were so they were able to move so well, and they were so comfortable. And it wasn't like their epidural had come out and they were hurting and able to move. You know, that's that's one thing that can happen. That's where that education of the epidural comes in. People are like, I didn't even know that could happen. Of course, that could totally happen. Your epidural gets turned off accidentally, kinked, comes out, gets dislocated. All of those can happen. You have then no epidural. But this like l- less dense epidural, I've heard, and I've also seen, even though they weren't called walking epidurals, they worked on labor pain, but that perineal pressure and that pelvic or rectal pressure was still very intense at the end. Which if yeah. people were expecting to be able to walk and expecting that pressure at the end, then that probably met their expectations. And they were like, yep, that's exactly what I thought it would be. It was pretty intense, but I was still able to move and it was fine. Versus you're expecting to feel nothing and you're like, what the heck is this? I have to push a baby out and I feel all this pressure. Yeah. And I don't think anesthesia and moms talk about what it's going to be very frequently. I think they expect Uh, us to educate them, but we we aren't really sure what the anesthesia does because some of them really just want to numb you up and never hear from you again. Isn't that so true? It really depends on the doctor or the And some of them are like, I'm only going to 80% because I want you to be able to push and I want you to be able to move. Right. That's a conversation that actually should happen between the birthing person and the provider. Right. Because I'm not giving the nurse change the cartridge. That's all I do. We don't adjust it. True. And yeah, I think childbirth ed, prenatal education should happen so that those informed discussions and educated discussions can can happen between the birthing person and the provider. Whereas the provider, the provider might not always know what kind of how dense the epidural is going to be either. Yeah. You, it's, it's, kind of, that's the other problem. You never see an anesthesiologist. I mean, we've even had people who wanted to do an anesthesia consult and you have to move all the all the world in order to be able to see anesthesia ahead of time. So. Ahead of time. Right. Yeah. So there are different different kinds of epidurals. Walking would be cool because you can maybe get to the chair. I don't think you're necessarily like walking around the hospital. Yeah. I've heard it's to a commode basically to get a right. baby. Yeah. But you're able to participate in movement in the bed a little differently. Yeah. And some, I don't want you guys to think that your epidural, your epidural shouldn't make you numb. Sometimes it makes you numb for a couple hours, but usually those first hours, I kind of let my patients have a nap. I'm not going to be like, let's move. Mm -hmm. They've been so tired. And I think the the priority of care those first couple hours is rest. Mm -hmm. And then it's time for our Jane Fonda. So what do you... (laughs) Is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah, it's time for Jane Fonda. We're going to move it around. Do people know what you're saying, what you mean? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> But I say we're gonna roll. We're gonna um, we're gonna continue to move as just like before your epidural. I'm going to encourage movement, but after your epidural, it's more like a rotisserie chicken. Yeah, <laughs> where we just roll and roll and turn and turn. Yeah, Mr. Ronco, right? The where you put the chicken on the spigot. Did you never see those infomercials? Hillary's a lot older than Mandy. <laughs> I mean, I've seen infomercials. I just don't know the names. I'll link it in the show notes for everyone to see it in their spare time. Turn. I've been to Kroger. Well, yeah, but they sold this one that you could turn and it would be on your countertop. Ew. And you would just stick your chicken in it and it would turn. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. I'm sure mm-hmm. it's on the YouTubes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, turning you side to side, but in labor, we have extra ticks. Have you guys heard of birth balls? Mandy's the birth ball queen. She loves the the peanut balls and birth balls. You know, so a lot of you might have thought that you're going to use a yoga ball, but I don't use that that much when they're in the bed. I feel like sometimes I do. I've tried it, but it's usually... it's hard to explain. Yeah. You're not sitting on it. You're leaning on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but just ask what your job as a patient who's listening mm-hmm. to this podcast is to tell the nurse, I want to turn and I want to participate. You might even offer your partner to help out. Because sometimes like I can't get another nurse in to help me roll a patient and she has a dense epidural. She won't help me move at all. The partner's mm-hmm. just sitting there flipping through Facebook. And I'm like, does anyone in this room want to get this baby out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah, the baby doesn't like come through the doorway after the epidural happens. There's definitely some movement. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people just think it's nap time and I'm not going to have to move until this baby's out or the nurse will just move me however she wants, but we're not right. superhuman. Right. There right. aren't always a bunch of nurses just waiting to come in my door to help me move you. Right. I think that is a misconception and I have a friend whose mom is in the hospital who's healthy and unfortunately has has been admitted to the hospital and feels horrible. She like has no energy. She's so sick. And she told my friend, she said, tomorrow, I hope I feel better. I want to get into the chair. And 
my friend said, okay, so have you tried to get in the chair yet? And her mom said, no, my IV pole won't reach to the chair. And of course, my friend is like, well, then you need a nurse to help you. So you just have to ask. But I think that's a common misconception when you get into the hospital. Someone's going to come in when it's time to do that and just tell you, hey, it's time to move to the chair. When if your butt wants to get in the chair, you just say, hey, my butt wants to get in the chair. How can you and I do this together? What will we need? And the nurse would then know, oh, we're going to need a lift. We're going to need this other person. And it'll take, you know... A few minutes, but this, these are the things we're going to need. Let me collect all that and tell you when it can happen. Versus, I'll just wait until someone tells me it's time to turn. That could be a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And nurses, so I teach nurses, hey, let's try to do this every 30 minutes and put it on a schedule. But I also teach parents because not every nurse does that. Parents, hey, set your clock and ask for help every time you want to turn because it is it is a whole team effort to turn that often. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you turn and then you have to get the baby on the monitor. So it is a lot of work for a nurse to turn you sometimes, which you're just not seeing all those behind the scenes looks at like what the nurse is doing to make sure that it's happening for you. Yeah. And again, yeah. like I said before, there's a lot of patients who don't want to turn and don't want to be bothered by us doing it. Of course, that doesn't keep me from not saying, this is your friend, the peanut ball. He's going to go between your legs. <laughs> that is not what I say. <laughs> I say, hi, I'm again, reminding you, I recommend, do you want to try this position or this position? And if someone is really adamant and they say, Mandy, I told you I don't want to turn, I'm still going to, I'll chart it. And then 20 minutes later, I'll say, again, I'm here for you. <laughs> think that it helps because we know it helps labor, labor move forward. We know that there are joints in your pelvis that need to change shape. And we know there's a baby in your pelvis that's attempting to make moves, literal turning of, of their heads and tucking of their chins to continue to be on that cervix and continue to move down. They're being pushed by your contractions. So they're like, get me the heck out of here. I need to find my best route out and I need to do it. You know, these contractions are telling me every few minutes, it's time to come out. So I'm going to make my moves. And if we're just in one position, then they're having to do all the work. It's going to take that much longer. If we use creative positions that give movement to those bones in the pelvis, then we're doing, we're doing our best to, you know, be the most efficient laborer that we can be. So turn Turning positions in the changing positions in the bed, sitting upright and leaning forward are things you can do with an epidural. Uh, peanut balls are uh, mimicking kind of like a squat or a lunge position, which are really nice wide positions for the pelvis, but they're also restful because you're laying in the bed and you're not actually squatting. You have an epidural. They have been shown in studies to augment labor, to improve labor patterns, the contractions, their efficiency, and to reduce the length of labor. So if the goal is to have a baby and reducing your length of labor can reduce a lot of other complications that may arise with a longer labor, then we're all working working for that goal. It just should be every maybe half hour to hour instead of every two or three hours when your one leg is like so numb, you have no other choice but to move. Yeah. That can happen. And you can bring your own peanut ball. We're recording this during COVID and some hospitals are saying they can't use peanut balls because they can't properly disinfect them, which is a little scary because they've been in people's right. lady parts for years. So I was hoping we had disinfected them before, I but I digress. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can bring your own. I'll link it in the show notes. It's uh, the ones I'm looking at. You can get a, a dual set, but there's one that I like that's about 15 inches. What do you like, Mandy? Oh, I go by centimeters. Um, 40, 50, or 60 centimeters. The ones on Amazon are usually a little smaller than the ones I'm used to. So I'll, I'll go up okay. to 60. We had smaller ones. Probably 15 inches were the ones that we used. We did have a bigger one. But the other thing is also as a nurse, like I can position you, but I don't really know how your body feels. And so if you're kind of like, this is hurting my hip, there's no way for me to know that because it's just such a small movement that could make that comfortable mm -hmm. that I don't know that because I'm not in your body, thankfully. Right. I've already had a baby. So if something's feeling... Weird, weird, tell your nurse, right? Yeah, and yeah. just be like, is there any way we could shift this way or or this labor ball is just hurting my hips. Yeah. And that's yeah. okay too. Like I've used like a step stool in the bed. I've used just pillows instead, mm -hmm. or I'll use like the smaller end of the labor ball. Like there's lots of different options, but we don't know what you're feeling. We can't read your mind. We can't read your body. Right, right. Yeah. That discussion is more like, where are you feeling it? What's it feel like? Is it contraction intensity? Is it pressure, rectal pressure, baby pressure? Is it no, my leg can't stay like this? All things that, that's like a continuing conversation that, the nurse wants to know. Yes. And yeah, I think and some people all of a sudden will be like, that, that's been hurting for two hours. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did you tell me? You know, Because I'll say, everything good? You feel fine? Yep. And then just in a while, I'll take out the peanut ball to move and be like, oh, that was miserable. And I'm like, ah! 
Why no. <laughs> okay. Maybe there's this like secret fantasy out there that your nurse is going to get your baby out if you do these certain things. Not true. No. Not true. No. We're working with bodies, two bodies, a baby and a birthing person, and they need to work together. And we're just testing things. We're just trying out movements. There's not necessarily... Unless I go in and I say, you know what? I think that your baby is facing this way. And this is why I think that. We've been doing this. And this is where we still are. We've tried this. And this is where we still are. Here's my one or two specific positions that if you can get there and it's comfortable, and we can try it for 20 minutes. I think that might be what I would recommend as next. Unless I say that, we're just guessing. Yeah. Mostly, right? I mean, we don't know necessarily, oh, when they say, oh my gosh, that one position was it. It's not like I waited to try it until I wanted you to have a baby. <laughs> right. I had no I idea. had to eat my lunch, so I didn't put you in that position until I was ready. <laughs> yeah, I get paid more if it's more like between three and five than like nine and ten. No way. We want a successful birth. And that that was just the order of things that worked at that time for that person, but it's not going to be the same the next time. So we're just trying things. And if you have an idea or if you are like, okay, I can do this, but if it's effective, like if it's not effective, I want to get out of this position, like a few contractions, you know, that's really great information, great communication. And then your partner standing up and being ready every time that you turn, oh my gosh, makes you, the birthing person, feel so supported and seen and like less of a burden on anyone because your partner, the person you've chosen is right there to help everyone. And then if you try to not do it yourself because you can hurt your back and hurt yourself, tomorrow you'll feel it. The next day you'll feel it without an epidural. But just, you know, I say you move your top half, I'll help with your bottom half, right? Because yep. usually it's the part that's numb. And so your partner and I will be on separate different sides of the bed to help you turn, but not your leg fall off and to make sure you're comfortable and safe. And then it's a team effort. It takes less time. It feels better. And emotionally, that's like some really great support during your labor. Every half hour, that can feel so good. Yeah. So another thing is to just expect that your epidural maybe isn't going to make you a noodle. I always tell people you're going to get 80% comfortable with your epidural. You are going to feel something so that hopefully you can still make small movements so you can adjust yourself a little bit in the bed and help the nurses when we're making bib movements. Nobody's expecting you to do a full turn on your own. Nobody's no. expecting that. No, you'll probably fall off the bed. Right. Or, or like one of your appendages will. Something will fall off the bed. You'll twist your back. It won't. Yeah. It won't work. No. But everybody likes to feel like they can make some adjustments to yeah. their body. Nobody likes to feel like they're paralyzed in the bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. And lifting your butt up is a small movement, but a huge deal when you're turning. <laughs> yes. Because right. if you just lift your butt up, I can shift you to the side and boom. But can lifting your butt up for me is a, is hard. Harder. Yeah, that is a big deal. It seems yeah. like, oh, well, I'll just lift. Oh gosh, I can't even move my... All I can move is my knee. It's yeah. a team effort. And so what Mandy said is like, we do try and move you about every half an hour. But I would say, you know, I think it's also fair to say, hey, if I come back, if you come back and I'm asleep, will you give me an hour? I could just use an hour of rest, restful I sleep. So if your nurse is moving that. you too much, although... I really rarely see nurses who move people too much. <laughs> but if you really need that sleep, and that's fair because you having energy is important to push that baby out as well. Mm -hmm. um, just let them know, hey, give me an hour if I'm asleep. Because a lot of times then I come back in in a half an hour and they're not asleep. So we might as well move them then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, they're so, like, oh, I'm so glad you came back when you said I, I want to move. Yeah. But I didn't want to call you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to feel dumb. Because I told right. you I wanted I to sleep. Oh, Hospitals you. are hard to sleep in. We understand all that. So yeah. Anyway, would, hopefully this gave. Yeah. What were you going to say, I would Mandy? Wake up. I would wake up if someone came in. So I'll say, we'll like plan it. If you need to move, you call me. If you don't, I'm not Smart. gonna come back for 60 minutes unless, you know, this or this happens. It's good to have a plan. And then they sleep and then I can do all the things like take their temperature and help them move and blah, blah, blah. All the things. All the things. Yeah, sleep yeah. is a big deal. But you are gonna be getting sleeps in like 60 minute chunks when you're in labor. So don't plan on a four hour spa mm -hmm. visit. Mm -mm. That's no, not going to happen. Not super great for labor. Maybe if not you're on side attack. Yeah, yeah, true. Not great for when you have an epidural, though. Your epidural is going to be one sided and. Yeah. No. You're going to start to feel things unevenly. Yeah. That's another thing with the epidural. It does kind of go with gravity. So it just drips into your epidural space. And if you don't move a little bit, it can get to one side more than the other. Sometimes it gets to one side more than the other, no matter how we move you. It just kind of depends. But um, moving you is an important anesthesia. Always likes to see that we're moving you. So but yeah. they're not going to help. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes they don't they have do. that call. Hey, I need a hand. <laughs> yeah. 
No. Anyway, so hopefully this helped you guys realize that movement is important while you have an epidural, while you're at the hospital, while you're at home, all of that time. It's important. Don't just lay in your bed like Hillary with kidney stones. No. You got to... Although even with kidney stones, they tell you to still walk because you got to try and move that thing out. Right. It's similar to birthing. It's just very small and you don't have to wake up with it at night or <laughs> breastfeed it, thankfully. <laughs> Thank goodness. Once it's out, it's gone. Yes. Very different kind of pain. It's in a little jar in my nightstand. (laughs) All right. Movement is key. Go ahead and ask us any questions in the show notes. I'd love to answer them. Thanks so much for coming on, Mandy. I'm sure we'll be here again on the Pulling Curls podcast. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. Thanks, Mandy. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode because I think it is so important to move and people just don't make it a priority. And as a nurse, when you're tired and the patient clearly doesn't care, you're like, what? Why am I putting so much effort into this? Obviously, we shouldn't think that, but it can just be hard as a nurse when you've been there so long and and all the things. So if you make it a priority, I think your nurse is really going to be on that game with you. And I think you're going to have a better labor outcome. So keep on moving. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope we help smooth out a few of the snarls in your life. We drop an episode every Monday and we always appreciate it when you guys share and review. Until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. Bye.